Hi, and welcome to Serverless Migration Station, where we show Google Cloud users one step they can take to modernize their serverless apps. I'm Wesley, joined by my colleague Martin and our little friend Porter to take you from point A to point B. As a longtime App Engine developer, you're probably aware of using its default database, the App Engine Data Store, via its NDB client library. To make user apps more portable, the next generation App Engine service has moved away from bundled services like Data Store. Since Data Store has matured into its own product, Cloud Data Store, we're here to help you take the key step of migrating from App Engine's NDB to Cloud NDB, so your app can basically use the same NDB code but accessing Cloud Data Store instead. My app uses Data Store quite a bit, so I'm interested in this. Uh, how do I get started with this migration, Wes? Well, in the previous video for Module 1, we migrated our baseline Web App 2 NDB Data Store app to Flask, a popular framework in the Python community. Today, we pick up right where Module 1 left off, a Flask NDB Data Store app, and we're going to migrate that to a Flask Cloud NDB Data Store app. Ah, yes, I remember that migration, but I forgot where the Module 1 code is. Uh, can you point me to it again? Definitely, Martin. So go to the Migration Module video and clone it or download the zip file. Its link is also in the video description below. We'll start with the Module 1 code, perform the NDB migration steps, and voila, that will result in the Module 2 code. Since this app uses only one App Engine service, after moving to Cloud NDB, you can easily port your app to Python 3. So the code lab features that bonus migration. That's why you'll also find a pair of Module 2 repo folders, one each for Python 2 and 3. But hold on, partner. Let's do the Cloud NDB migration first. So hit pause now to go get the Module 1 code. OK, if you're ready, let's walk you through this migration. As in previous modules, let's ensure we have a working app before migrating. From your Module 1 folder, check you've got Flask in your lib folder, or run the pip install command if you don't. Upload to App Engine with gcloud app deploy, then once it's live, point a browser or curl to it and confirm the output's the same from modules 0 and 1. Next, we're ready to migrate to Cloud NDB, this time starting with the config files. Anytime you use a Google Cloud client library in Python 2, you need a pair of third-party helper libraries. Fortunately, they're already on App Engine servers, so do not add them to requirements.txt, nor use pip install. Built-in libraries like this are declared in app.yaml. Here, create a new library section with gRPC I.O. and setup tools. If your app's app.yaml has a library section, add these helper libraries if they're not already there. The good news is that third-party packages are way easier in the next gen, where it's just requirements.txt. In the Module 1 video, we explain you need to tell App Engine where to look for your self-bundled or copied third-party libraries. That's done in App Engine config.py. It's also true of built-in third-party libraries like gRPC I.O. and setup tools, but requires a different code snippet in App Engine config, where you reference them to lib in the setup tools.package resources working set, just like you see here. This App Engine config can now handle both built-in and copied third-party libraries. So this is probably pretty good boilerplate to have for all of your Python 2 App Engine apps. We mentioned earlier how third-party package management is way easier in Python 3, and not even having an App Engine config file is part of that. Next are the third-party packages we do need to copy or bundle. In Module 1, we created requirements.txt with a single reference to Flask. Now add the Cloud NDB library, spelled Google Cloud NDB, all lowercase with hyphens in between. When making this video, Flask was on version 1.1.2 and Cloud NDB was on 1.8.0. Since the repo is actively maintained, you may see newer versions there. Now delete any old lib folder you may have and run the pip install command to get those libraries in there so we can upload to App Engine. That's it for config. Let's jump into main.py, starting with the imports. It's a one-for-one -one swap to switch from App Engine NDB to Cloud NDB. As with most Google Cloud client libraries, you need to create a client to access the API. So that's the new line you see. The best news is that most of your NDB code stays as is. The only difference is that it's more idiomatic Python, requiring use of the client's context manager. If you're new to those, it's just saying that you need to acquire those resources before you can use them. You'll typically see with statements with files because you got to be able to open a file before you can read from or write to it, right? 
So add a new width block and put all of your data store calls inside, like what you see here. Everything else is the same, making this migration fairly painless. One more tip is that transactional tasks isn't a feature in Cloud NDB yet, meaning you can't create tasks only if the transaction succeeds. In other words, task queue calls won't get rolled back if the transaction fails, only data store operations. Ignoring the readme, all other source files stay unchanged. Index.html template file, gcloud ignore, and really that's it. So that's the entire migration to Cloud NDB. Before we go back to the presentation, let's talk briefly about a Python 3 port. The language updates you have to make may be considerable. If there's any good news on the App Engine side, it mostly involves deleting stuff, like deleting a bunch of lines from app.yaml, deleting the lib folder, and appenginconfig.py file. Our super simple app is already Python 2.3 compatible, so the only file that needs updating is app.yaml. Change the language version, now that's obvious. Next-gen App Engine requires a web framework that does its own routing, so you have three options here. Set all script handlers to auto because the framework does the routing now. Two, delete all script handlers because if everything is auto, they're all meaningless, right? Or three, replace handlers with an entry point section if you have specific startup requirements. Read more about these options in the docs. Note, I only said script handlers. Static file handling stays as is. Lastly, I've already said third-party package management in the next gen is way simpler allowing you to delete the library section entirely. Again, the real work for your app is the language update. OK, back to the show. Wow, that was a pretty straightforward migration, Wes. I'm glad to see most user code doesn't have to change. I have one question, though. What if I have an older app, uh, say a Python 2.5 app? The 2.5 runtime was deprecated in 2013, and then it was completely shut down in 2017. Uh, when Python 2.7 took over. So my app's been dead ever since. Can I somehow bring it back to life? Uh, the answer is yes, Martin, but there is a catch. You have to migrate from 2.5 to 2.7 and DB to NDB first before applying the migration we just discussed. Check out these Python 2.5 DB docs as well as the NDB migration guide to get started. That's great. Uh, are there docs for NDB too? Well, here are the links to App Engine NDB as well as its library repo. We'll also post them in the description below. Thanks for those DB and NDB resources. Can we round out this trifecta with the cloud NDB docs? And, and while you're looking that up, uh, why is it so important to migrate to cloud NDB anyway? Of course, Martin. Here are its library and its docs links. As far as why it's important, you know that modernizing your app and making them more portable is one goal of the latest App Engine platform. For Python developers, the key reason is that Cloud NDB works in both Python 2 and 3, which means that once you're on Cloud NDB, you can finally upgrade your app to Python 3. And with that, you've crossed the data store finish line, literally. This is the last of the required migrations as far as the data store goes. It's not necessary to migrate further to Cloud Data Store's native client library, nor Cloud Firestore, unless you've got specific reasons to do so. OK, what would be some of the reasons I'd consider those optional data store migrations? Well, using the official Cloud Data Store client library means moving away from everything you know about NDB and how it works. The primary reason to do this is if you have other apps that already use it, for example, Python 3 App Engine apps or non-App Engine apps, and you want to consolidate so that you're not using two different client libraries to talk to the same data store. It simplifies and reduces your maintenance cost too. Anyway, if you want to look into it, see the Module 3, Code Lab, and Video. The next generation of Cloud Data Store is Cloud Firestore. Based on the name change, you can probably guess that it now has some features from the Firebase real-time database, and you'd be right. This migration is for those who must have some of those Firebase features for their apps. Check out Module 6 if interested. OK, so if those other data store migrations are optional, uh, where can I go now? Yeah, great question, Martin. Well, users should continue to migrate from App Engine's bundled services to standalone services outside of App Engine, like Cloud NDB. What other App Engine services and APIs are you using? If you use push task queues, consider migrating to Cloud Tasks and see Module 7 to get started. 
If your organization is consolidating apps into containers for flexibility, CI/CD, or consistency, consider migrating to Cloud Run. If so, see modules four and five. Finally, it goes without saying that porting to Python 3 should always be a consideration since Python 2 has been sunset. We add new migration modules periodically, and most will have videos too, so keep checking back. Cool. Uh, what other migration resources do you have for Cloud NDB? Well, the best place to look is in the docs for Cloud NDB, especially its migration guide. The code in those docs has its own repo, so here's a link to that. And finally, check out the last link that points to migration samples contributed by the community. On behalf of Martin and Porter, this is Wesley Chun. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Serverless Migration Station and allowing us to show you different ways to modernize your apps. And we'll see you the next time on another Serverless Expeditions. <laughs> <laughs>